Okay, hello all. I'm going to show you how to create a cabinet, a base cabinet in Revit. So basically like something you want to put a sink in or something like that or just a countertop to go over a base cabinet. So once you have your project open or you know your little thing you got going on, you're going to want to go up here to file and you're going to click new or just hover over the arrow besides new and you're going to click family so i'm personally going to click on english imperial and then i'm going to go but you can go to whatever folder you prefer i'm going to go to casework because that's what cabinetry is it's casework So then it's going to open this um, project and you're going it's going to automatically open the right view and then a 3D view and a front view. So the reference level is the plan view. When you see this view here, this is a floor plan view of your cabinetry. Please know that before you start modeling your cabinets because if you're like me and you didn't know what was what yeah this is plan view so the first thing you're going to want to do is go to the extrusion tool so you if you're just absolutely clueless about revit or how to create cabinets or your own components at all so right now what we're doing we're creating a component under the category casework so this extrusion button Extrude means to thrust or to force out if you just simply Google the word extrusion. So basically, that's what we're going to do. So click on extrusion. And these things here are reference lines. These dash lines, they're reference lines. So like in Revit, it automatically gives me the reference line a width of four feet and a depth of two feet. So cabinets, base cabinets are usually two feet deep, um, but you can really choose whatever width you like. So I'm not going to go to four feet, but if you want, you can. That's why you have reference lines here. So you have different tools in the draw section. I'm going to go with the line tool, but if you wanted to, you already know your measurements or you just want to do a random cabinet, you could do the square tool and as you can see there are dimensions showing you how far out you're going I don't prefer the square tool because at the end of the day it's gonna dictate them as single elements anyway so I'm gonna select that and I hit the delete button and I'm gonna go in with the line tool and I am gonna do two feet wide by two feet deep so boom that is my countertop so you can separately create a countertop in the cabinetry in a whole different family two different families but me personally i prefer to do them in the same family because it makes it easier to add materials so now I'm going to click the check mark. Boom. That is my countertop in floor plan view. Now I'm going to go to the front view. As you can see, my countertop is on the floor and it's gigantically thick. It's one foot deep and that's not what I want. So cabinets are usually about three feet tall. So that's where I'm going to go with this. So you can pull this up to here. It'll automatically snap. Or you can use the align tool up here, which is shortcut on your keyboard for AL. So if you're going to use Revit, I prefer, I suggest you get to know your shortcuts. So like the move tool is MV and things like that. So moving back to AL, you're going to select the line first that you don't want to move. The line that you want the things to align to. So I'm going to select this reference line. And the next line you're going to select is the line you do want to move. So boom, that's going to automatically 
um, snap to that. So I want my countertop to be um, two inches thick, but um, the thickness of countertops really range. So you can go up here in the depth box and just type in a depth. But it just does that. So what I prefer to do, and I'm going to press the undo button up here, is I prefer to just draw a detail line by going to the shortcut LI on my keyboard. Or you can go to create model line. And I'm just going to draw a line two foot deep. And I'm going to snap, I'm going to align that tool. So I'm going to press AL on my keyboard. I'm going to align that with the bottom of this and boom now I'm gonna select that little detail line and if you don't know how to do this you can just hover over and select and press delete so now that I have my countertop I'm going to do my actual base cabinet so you can either model that in the front view by going to create Extrusion and doing that, or you can do it again on the plan view. So that's the one I learned it on, so that's the one I'm going to do. That's the one I feel like is the most basic as an amateur who is learning Revit or just you know needing to know how to do a base cabinet. So I'm going to click this time the rectangle tool since I already have my countertop. And yes, countertops do have an overhang, but for the purpose of this video, I'm just going to do a base cabinet. Obviously, if you want an overhang and, you know, the depth of your cabinet is two feet and the width is two feet, you might want to go over like half an inch. So you would, you know, make that two feet and a half an inch. But I'm just going to do the same. I'm not going to do an overhang for this so once I did that, I'm going to press the check mark and go to the front view. And I'm going to shortcut AL on my keyboard. And I'm going to align that with that. So now everything is aligned. And now that I think about it, I do want to do an overhang because it kind of just looks weird. So you can go to the front view and just click your countertop and just pull it out i'm not doing exact measurements i'm just overhanging it a little bit but if you did want to do exact measurements you can definitely you know put in some more reference lines or you can li shortcut on keyboard and go out see right now it says i went out at uh, one inch but if you wanted to go out half an inch just click li and you can type in half an inch and you press enter and you can align the end of this with the half inch line but now that you have the base cabinet you can continue to check how your cabinet is looking i like to go to the view one which is a 3d and just click this little pan thing and this is what it's looking like so far Obviously, this is not like a cabinet. But now we're going to actually do the cabinet doors. So back to the plan view. And once again, you can do this in the front view, but I'm going to do it in plan view for this video. So right now, this is the front. This is the back. So please know that because, I mean, it doesn't matter. Because obviously once you place this cabinet in your project, you can obviously rotate it. But if you don't want to have to go through all that, just know that you can model to the front. So there are different types of cabinet doors. Um, I'm going to do an overlay cabinet door. And what that means is um, you won't be able to see the edges of the cabinet. It will just be the cabinet door. So, also, I just remember one thing I forgot was the toe kick. So, you want to do a toe kick 
in your cabinet. So how I do my toe kick, there's plenty of ways to do it, but how I do mine is I like to do my toe kick three inches above. So um, this is obviously, but I want this all to stay within the three foot height. So I'm going to bring this up three inches and I'm going to just click LI on my keyboard and I'm going to draw a line. This is a reference slash detail line, not a technical reference line, but I'm going to call it that. And I'm going to type in three inches and I'm going to type on my keyboard AL and I'm going to click, I'm going to press the tab button till I see that blue dot pop up and I'm going to click it and I'm going to click that. Now I'm going to delete this line and now on my plan view, now I have room for my toe kick. So now on my plan view, I'm going to go to create, extrusion, rectangle because I already, I don't need to do lines. I'm just doing rectangle because it's easier because I already have a square layout. And I'm going to start from the cabinets. Keep in mind, I have an overhang on my countertop. So this line is my countertop. This line is my cabinet. So I'm going to start with my cabinet and just draw a square. And I want to make sure it goes back three inches as well. So I'm going to click DI for dimension. That is the shortcut for the dimension, align dimension. And I'm going to click this line. So right now that's not three inches. That is 221.32 of an inch. And that's not what I want. So I'm going to draw a reference line by clicking the line tool in the draw section up here. And I'm just going to draw it three inches. And if it says highlighted lines overlap, that's fine because I'm not keeping this three inch line. I'm really going to delete it later. So just press the X if you're doing what I'm doing. So I'm going to click AL. Click this blue dot, which is the top of my three inch line. And I'm going to click this line here. And now that that is aligned, I'm going to delete this three inch line. So now I'm going to click the check mark and go to the front view so I can obviously adjust the height. I'm going to click AL. This is the bottom of my cabinet so I'm going to click that and this is the top of my toe kick. I'm going to click that and now if you go to view number one there is the toe kick. So you can view it from any angle you want. Now that you have the toe kick I'm going to create my overlay doors. So back in the plan view, I am going to go to create extrusion. Now for the purpose of this video, I don't care how long they are. I don't care if they're even or not. But if you're trying to model an actual cabinet or doing custom cabinetry, I would definitely keep count of the measurements so i'm going to do the rectangle tool and since this is an overlay i'm going to start at the very edge of my countertop i mean my cabinet not my countertop so i'm going to click this and i'm going to go a little ways away from the middle because there's always a little gap between the um two cabinet if you're doing a two cabinet door cabinet then there is going to be a gap but if you're doing a one door you would go all the way to the edge but i'm going to do a two door and i'm going to put it here and instead of trying to recreate that i am just going to select all of this, press CO for the shortcut copy, or you can press this button here. And as you can see, I'm just going to press CO and start at this corner and move it here. So now we have 
two doors created in the same extrusion. Now I'm going to press the check mark. And when I go to the front view, as you can see, Revit just automatically makes it uh, a length, but you're obviously going to adjust it. So I'm going to pull this up. And I obviously don't want it covering my toe kick, so I'm going to pull that up. So now when I go to view one, as you can see, I have my cabinet doors, my cabinet base, my countertop, and my toe kick. Now if you want to get detailed with it, you can add shelves in here, but I can make that for another video. I would only recommend doing that if you're going to draw a detail drawing through this cabinet, like make a section cut through the cabinet. But if you're not, then you don't have to worry about that. But I can make that in another video. So now, the really the final step in creating this cabinet is doing hardware. So, pulls. So, I'm going to go to my front view. And I'm going to do some circular pulls. So, I'm going to go to Extrusion. The Circle Tool. And... I'm just going to do a 3 4 inch circle, radius, and I'm going to press copy, and I'm just going to copy it over, no specific measurements. Now I've done my two hardware pulls in the same exclusion. You can make them separate exclusion. If you want them to be different like lengths or widths but I want them to be the same length and width so I'm gonna go to check mark and they look fine but you got to go to the plan view and as you can see Revit has made it a really specific thickness at one foot so um, as you can see the pools are starting at the back of my um cabinet doors which is what i don't want even though that is where the screws go and everything i want the actual pull goes on the front of the cabinet doors which is here so that's where that is and they obviously don't want them to be super thick so i'm going to pull this back i went too far back I'm going to pull this back like right. You can actually, I'm not doing specific measurements. So those are my pools. And you can even view from the right side. So this is the right side of your cabinet. And if you wanted to view the left side, just go to view one and two go over to the left side. So if you want to add materials, to your cabinet before putting it in your project which you can after but if you want to go ahead and do it now you just select the extrusion so I'm going to select the countertop and you would go over here in the properties and see where it says material and by category just click here and it's going to pull up your materials um, I'm just going to type in some marble. Revit automatically comes with materials, but you can create your own by clicking this here, and I can uh, make another video on that. So I'm going to load this material in the document. This is a nice pretty marble that Revit has. So I'm going to click apply first and OK. And for the base cabinet, you do the same thing. I'm going to type in wood. And there's different woods. Um, obviously, I wouldn't pick wood flooring, but I'm just going to pick this one here. So you pick this up arrow to load it into your document. And then it shows you a little image or a color here of what it's going to look like. I'm going to click apply and OK. And I'm going to put that same material on my cabinet door fronts. 
my cam doors and it's already loaded so I don't have to search it over it again so I'm gonna click OK now for my pools I'm gonna choose like a chrome I'm gonna click this upward button and click apply and OK and for the toe kick um, I'll just do wood that I did before. Now to add it, you click load into project. And you would name it. Um, I'm going to just name it something else. Test cabinet. But you would obviously name it what you need to name it. And now here your cabinet is in plan view. Now if you would have modeled the doors on the other side, they would have been obviously on the other side. You would just click the space bar to rotate. So I'm going to put this cabinet in this little building that I have here. And now I am going to go to the camera view. and correct this and now I'm going to go to this teapot down here to render just to show you um oh you need to put lights in so it's not dark okay so this is a um quick rendering of the cabinet that was made so you should see it has the marble countertop the um, pools and the actual base cabinet so now I'm going to do a sort of realistic render by clicking this teapot at the bottom I set the setting to medium and interior lights artificial only so it's just going to show with the recessed lights that I have put in but obviously if you put in a bigger light it's going to be a lot easier to see. Here's the rendering. Um, it looks a lot better than the other one I showed you. Um, it looks pretty good and realistic. As you can see, the little lights. I've only put in a few recessed lights, but if you're doing a project in Revit, um, if you're using bigger lights like a chandelier or a pendant or something, it's obviously going to shine a lot brighter than the few recessed lights I've put in. So if it looks a little dark, I mean, that's why I've only put in a few lights just for the purpose of this video. So yeah, that's how you make a base cabinet in Revit. Thank you everyone for watching. Make sure to subscribe and connect with me on all my social medias. Um, I hope this video was really helpful and God bless.